This is part 33 of ASP.NET Web API tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to generate links using route names in ASP.NET Web API. Let's understand this with an example. Let's flip to Visual Studio. At the moment, we've got a very simple students controller here. We've got a static list of students collection and a method which is going to return student by ID. Now let's add a post method which is going to create a new student for us. This method is going to return us HTTP response message. The name of the method is post and to this method we pass the student object that we want to create. And this student object all we are going to do is add it to this static students list collection. In a real world application we will be saving it to a database table to an XML file etc. But to keep this example simple we are just going to add it to the static list of students collection that we have. Once the student item is successfully created, we have to send back item created status code to the client. And to do that, let's create a response. So let's create a variable. I'm going to call it response equals. And we're going to use the request object to create the response. Request.create response. And we have an overload here where we can specify the status code. So HTTP status code dot created. So this is going to send that HTTP status code 201 item created. And then we simply want to return that response to the client. Let's give our solution a build. And let's issue a post request using Fiddler. We want to issue a post request to this URI. Content type is application for slash JSON. In the request body, we also need to include the student object that we want to create. Student object has got two properties, ID. Let's initialize this to four. Name. Let's initialize name property to Stacy. And let's execute this request. Request completed. Look at the response header. We got the status code 201 created. Now, when a new item is created, Along with sending the status code 201 created, we also have to send the location that is the URI of the newly created item so that when the client clicks on that URI, it will take him to the newly created item. One way to achieve this is by using the request object. So we have the response object which we are sending to the client. So to the response headers, we want to include the location header and we want to include a new URI there, the URI of the newly created item. And to get that, we are going to make use of the request object. Request object has got request URI. So this property is going to give us this URI to which we have issued the post request. And to that, all we need to do is append the ID property value, which will take us to that new student. So to the request URI, let's append the student object's ID property value. ID is an integer, so let's convert that to string. Let's build our solution one more time and issue a post request again. Request completed. Let's look at the response header. Notice we got status code 201 and look at the URI of the newly created item. Now let's click on the raw tab and when we click on this link, it's going to take us to that newly created item. We have a small problem with this example. Now notice when we are issuing a post request, in the URI at the end, we've got a forward slash. Now let's see what's going to happen if I remove that forward slash. Let's issue the post request again, request completed. In the response header, we got status code 201. And look at the URI of the newly created item. It's not properly formed. There is no forward slash between students and the student ID 4. So when we click on this URI, we are going to get an error. No HTTP resource was found that matches the request URI. So this is not working as expected. Now you might be thinking, why don't we include that forward slash in the code where we are constructing the location URI. So we have the request URI to that append forward slash and then the student ID. Let's see what happens if we do this. Back in Fiddler, let's issue the post request again. Request completed successfully. In the response header, we got status code 201 and look at the location URI. This is properly formed. This location URI is properly formed because at the end of this post URI, we don't have a forward slash. 
if I include a forward slash, look at what's going to happen to the location URI. Notice now we've got two forward slashes, so this is not working as expected. The easiest and right way to generate links is by using route names. There are two simple steps to use route names to generate the links. Look at what this method is doing right here. This is returning us student by ID. So I'm going to provide this route a name. To provide a route with a name, we use the name property of the route attribute. Since this method is returning us student by ID, I'm going to call this route get student by ID. And then we can use this route name to generate the links. So here, instead of using the request objects request URI property, let's use this route name. To use the route name, I'm going to use this class URL. This class has got link method. And look at the first parameter it's expecting. It's expecting route name. So the route name using which we want to generate the link is this get student by ID. And if you look at this route, it has got ID parameter for which we have to supply a value. So where are we going to get student ID from? Using this student object right here. And to provide a value for that ID parameter, I'm going to use an anonymous type here. ID equals, we have the student object coming into this method use the ID property of the student object. So with these two changes, let's give our solution a build and quickly test the location URI. Let's execute the request again. At the moment, we have a forward slash at the end of the post URI. And notice the location URI is properly generated. Let's remove the forward slash from the end. Let's execute the request. And again, if we look at the location URI, it's properly formed as expected. So the easiest and right way to generate links is by using route names. So there are two simple steps to generate links using route names in ASP.NET Web API. Set a name for the route using the name property of the route attribute, and then use that name of the route to generate the link. We have seen both of these steps in action just now. Thank you for listening, and have a great day.